even lie to you right now, that's what most of my days look like for the majority of the whole year. Honestly, the feeling that I was feeling is so hard to explain to people who haven't been through it. Like, you had to be there. The best way I can explain it is I was constantly exhausted, even if I got good sleep the night before, and I quite literally did not feel like doing anything but yet I would still be bored. So at that point, I felt like I was just existing, not living. And while I was in that dark time, I literally did not feel like I was capable of getting out of it, but here I am, I'm living and breathing because when you have no motivation or energy to do anything except rot in bed and stress, it's hard to enjoy life. And nobody deserves that. It's the worst feeling in the world. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. But me personally, I had to get to that point before I was actually forced to make the uncomfortable changes in my life that I usually wouldn't do. Hey guys, it's Alessia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Sorry I started the video on such a depressing note. Um, if you're feeling like that, I swear you're gonna get better. I have so many tips for you. I feel like almost all my videos are how to be more productive or how to get your life together, but I didn't realize how much I was letting my productivity affect how I felt about myself in general. Like my self-esteem was literally dictated by my productivity. But realistically, if you don't take the time to heal and better understand yourself, you're never gonna be productive again. Simple as that. Imagine your child self sitting in front of you right now. Say your child self wasn't living up to your expectations of them. Would you yell at them and tell them to get their shit together and force them to do stuff when they don't wanna do it? No, you would take it slow and go gentle on them. So it's like, no shit, I got burnt out. I was putting these inhumane, unachievable expectations on myself. And while I was doing that, I was talking shit to myself constantly. Nobody deserves to be spoken to like that all the time, especially if it's from the person that should love you the most. I am so sorry. I just noticed I wasn't looking in the lens this whole time. See, normally I would start like punching myself in the face, not literally just <laughs> saying like you dumbass. but that actually leads to my first point. You gotta work on accepting and loving yourself. Yeah, you may be a mess right now. It's okay, girl, we've all been there, or most of us have. But the whole process starts with accepting yourself as you are right in this moment. Because pushing your feelings to the side just makes the recovery process longer and harder. It's just gonna delay it, and then you're gonna have to deal with all the shit later. I learned the hard way. As I was constantly pushing those feelings aside all the time, the feelings became so strong that I actually couldn't even get out of bed at that point. And because of that, I became so hard on myself that all day, every day, I would constantly focus on what I wasn't doing right. But girl, let me let you in on a little secret. The key to accepting yourself is focusing on what you are doing right and celebrating every single accomplishment, no matter how tiny. Were you kind to someone today? That probably just made their day. That's an accomplishment. I literally thought that only accepting myself at my best was the epitome of self-love. And by that, I mean, I would only show myself love and acceptance when I was being productive, when I had a full face of makeup on, when I was wearing outfits that complemented my body. But going on this journey taught me something that at first wasn't easy to get through my little noggin. And it's that I never truly loved myself because I wasn't willing to accept myself at my worst. Girl, at this point, take out a notepad and start taking notes because I'm low-key spitting. So maybe you're going through this for a reason. Maybe it's teaching you how to love yourself so unconditionally that nothing can bring you down again. Maybe this is the worst of it. Maybe once this is over, you'll be able to view everything with a fresh new mindset. So that right there is the first step because it's gonna help you stop trying to control and change yourself and instead work with what's already in you. You're more powerful than you know. You just have to realize it. Also that when you work on accepting and loving yourself, it's much easier to take that time to rest, which is necessary. Okay, it does look like you're resting because you're not actually doing anything productive, but in reality, you're just so stressed and overwhelmed that you're literally paralyzing yourself. That's not rest, that's mental torture. So at this point, relaxing is actually one of the most productive things you can do. You wanna be productive? Go take a nap, girl. I'm kidding, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, I would be sleeping forever. Treat yourself like you're actually sick with a cold. Just like your body needs time to rest, your mind needs time to rest too. To let yourself and your brain finally get some rest, you have to release all your expectations you have on yourself and all of the pressure you're putting on yourself. Sometimes it's okay if all you're doing is existing because that's what's gonna make you feel like you're living again. If you're like me and you have trouble resting because your mind just won't shut off, ever. Doing mindfulness techniques like meditation and deep breathing actually help a lot. And I'm not just saying that to be like, I'm a spiritual gal. Deep breathing especially never worked for me until I tried this technique and you're gonna do it with me right now. So the technique is when you breathe in for four seconds, and then breathe out for six. I noticed that when I kept breathing like that, it literally immediately lifted my anxiety off of my body. Start treating your self-care like it's the most productive thing you can do, because it is. Actually, an example of self-care is spending time with the people who uplift you and make you feel good, which leads into my next point, which is talk to someone. Connection with others is a crucial part of being human. That's one of the reasons why we were put on this earth. So without those connections, we can start to struggle mentally. So I am so thankful that I have supportive people around me to lean on, but I also don't like putting everything I'm feeling onto them at once. So that's when I forced myself to take the step of starting therapy, even though I was terrified and that is the exact reason I didn't actually start it sooner. And let me tell you, I never would have thought that therapy would be the turning point that it was 
for me. Like most of the things that I teach you guys, I learned from my therapist because she slays. She's actually been helping me to work on my tendency of putting way too much pressure on myself, which she taught me comes from a place of fear. So we've been turning that fear into calmness and power. But honestly, up until this point, I think I've gone through at least five therapists that I just didn't vibe with until I found my guru. Something that actually makes finding a therapist way easier is BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. Regardless if you struggle with mental health or not, I think every single person should be doing therapy because it just gives you the tools to cope and approach your life in different ways. And life can get hard sometimes most of the time. So people who are in therapy are extra prepared for anything that comes their way. BetterHelp not only makes therapy more affordable, but it helps finding a therapist so much easier so you don't have to struggle like I did. Because literally all you have to do is fill out a questionnaire and within a few days, you'll get matched with a licensed therapist that's best fit to your specific needs. And don't worry if you don't vibe with them. You're allowed to change therapists at any time until you find one that you actually love. If you do want to take the step of starting therapy, which I do highly recommend, you could get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Alessia, which I will also link down below in the description so it's easy. Trust me, therapy may just be a turning point for you like it was for me. But while you're waiting to get matched with your therapist, let me try and be yours for now. I got you. We all know this next point. We just don't do it, even though we get told it all the time. And it's to take breaks from social media. By taking breaks, I don't mean deleting your accounts or deleting the apps, but if you're willing to take that step, do it because it's a good thing to do. Like my boyfriend deleted all of his social media apps months ago and to support me, he literally goes on Safari and goes on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok only to support me and look at memes sometimes, I guess. I don't know about y'all, but I can literally scroll for hours without noticing until I see that one TikTok that's like, okay, stop scrolling, you're addicted. And I'm like, oh. Most of the content I see on social media makes me feel bad about myself and my life. No matter if it's an unrealistic beauty standard, people only showing the good parts of their lives or even positive content that's motivational because most of the time it just reminds me of what I'm not doing. When you're constantly scrolling for hours every day, your brain gets used to that constant dopamine. So eventually all of the other things in life that would give you that dopamine rush, like going out in nature or seeing your favorite cousin, you're not gonna enjoy it the same anymore. That's the worst thing ever. Why would you want that? Because our brains aren't supposed to be getting those constant dopamine hits. Like the beauty the beauty of life is that the beauty only comes out sometimes, you know? Also, God did not create our brains to be overloaded with so much information in the span of a short period of time. Like we're watching five TikToks about five different things in the span of three minutes. I've tried almost everything to limit my social media use and absolutely nothing would work until my boyfriend stole my phone one day, went into my settings, went to app limits and put two hours on all of my social medias. So he did that without telling me and then put a passcode that I still don't know to this day. So when those two hours are up, it kicks me out of the app and it asks for the passcode. And unless I know it, I can't get back into the app. Girl, at first I was livid. I was so mad. I was like, it's my job. How are you gonna do that to me? But it's literally the best thing he could have done for me. Social media is so powerful that it actually has the power to change your mindset. So that leads to my next point. If you don't change your mindset, you won't change anything because we can't solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them. If you're surrounding yourself with people who speak negatively all the time, that is your first mistake, Miss Guru. When you're constantly, constantly, constantly hearing something, it actually gets engraved into your brain and then you start speaking and thinking that way. So you actually have to try to surround yourself with people who find the positive in things. Plus, who wants to be around someone that's complaining all the time? In my whole life, I've always been a pessimist because I grew up around pessimists, so. Yay. So if you're like me, this may take a bit to get the hang of, but whenever you catch yourself thinking a negative thought, flip that same thought into the positive version of it. Like instead of telling yourself, I don't think I'll ever be able to change, remind yourself that everything you've been up through up until this point, you said the same thing about, and guess what? You made it out. I say this in basically like every video I've ever made, but <laughs> learning to show gratitude will immediately help to shift your mindset because you're actually starting to align yourself with that wavelength of receiving. For most people, it helps to keep a gratitude journal, which is what I've been doing like most of my life. But actually, lately I've been expressing my gratitude during my meditations. So it's basically self-care times two. I've been talking too much. So at first I had to teach myself to be thankful for the little things because I couldn't even think of the big things. So by little things, I mean like my dog waking me up in the morning, showering me with kisses, my loving supporting family, how the birds chirping outside remind me of my childhood. Over time doing that eventually rewired my whole brain into finding the positive in everything rather than focusing on the negative of everything. And a mindset shift takes time so. Believe me and trust the process because the process is a beautiful thing. Right now, if you're thinking this is all way too much for me to implement at once, don't worry because the next point is focus on one thing at a time. One thing about me is I start to overthink everything I have to do, not only in a week, 
but a month. And then I spend more time stressing about what I have to do instead of actually doing it. So at that point, it's just a lose-lose. And this one was hard for me. Honestly, at this point, I'm saying it for all of them because this process was a hard and long one for me. Like at first I had to break my days into the tiniest chunks possible because even breaking it into larger chunks would stress me out about the smaller things I would have to do. So I was like, okay, first let's wake up. Now, let's make breakfast. Okay, now let's take our morning shit. I literally had to put my morning shit on my to-do list. Are you kidding me? It's a human thing to want to get everything we have to do done at once and to create huge goals for ourselves. But for most of us, it just stresses us out more and then makes us get less done. By many of us, I mean me. The funny thing is I always knew that taking it one step at a time would make things so much easier for me. But for some reason, I never actually did it until I heard this one story and it literally changed my whole mindset. I don't know why, but it did. It's like a children's story too. And I forgot where it's from, but it goes something along the lines of there's a boy and a horse in a forest. The boy starts freaking out and says to the horse, oh my God, I can't see a way out of the forest. It's covered with trees. The horse is like, well, can you see your next step? The boy looks down and says, yeah. The horse says, okay, then just do what I've been doing and take your next step. Isn't that so much easier than focusing on what's far ahead? And by doing that, they escaped the forest in the matter of an hour when it was supposed to take a day. And bro, I don't know why that simple ass story stuck with me so much, but it did. And I'm a changed woman ever since. Because most of the time we get so overwhelmed about not knowing how to reach our goals or how long it's gonna take to get there, or even feeling like you're taking the wrong path to reach that goal. When you just keep focusing on your next step, not your next three steps, not your next five steps, not the end goal, you're gonna slow slowly keep making progress and without even noticing it, you're gonna end up where you want it to be. Take it one day at a time. And if that's too much, take it an hour at a time. And I promise you, you'll see more progress than you ever have before. Okay, now it's for the girlies that are really like me and want a quick, fast, easy result. Sorry, but that's not how it works around here. But lucky for you, working out is something that gives you almost instantaneous results. Don't get me wrong though, I mean mentally, not physically. You're not gonna have a dump truck in the matter of a day. I didn't start working out because I wanted to improve my body. I literally started working out because I couldn't deal with my overthinking brain all the time and I needed a distraction. So even just exercising for one day boosts your mood and reduces stress because it makes your brain release endorphins, which are another feel good chemical. Plus it just started to become something that actually pulled me out of bed and I actually started to enjoy it because I liked the way it was making me feel. Little bonus point, nature is also something that gives instantaneous results just because it's so healing and calming. Right right when you step outside, you feel it. Pets are also something that give you instantaneous results because they just make you feel happy right in the moment. So wait, if you have a pet that you can walk, you can have a nature walk with your pet. I did it. I cracked the code. So girl, you got this. You just have to keep reminding yourself that right now, taking care of yourself is the most productive thing you can do. Your to-do list can wait, girl. When you've no energy and you're constantly overwhelmed, of course you're gonna feel like doing nothing. So don't be hard on yourself. Also, I just came to this conclusion recently. You're actually never gonna have your shit together. None of us are ever gonna have our shit together. The world always throws shit at you. You're just gonna be able to deal with it better. Like I can't lie, before my toxic trait was when I would think of my best self, I would think of this perfection of a woman. But she's always gonna have flaws, both mentally and physically. She's gonna have highs and she's gonna have lows. It's just how she deals with it. And that's how you know if you're becoming your best self or not, the way you deal with things. I really, really hope this video was able to give you that little spike of motivation that you needed to give yourself the love that you deserve. I believe in you. And it is perfectly okay if you take one step forward and five steps back. I would take one step forward and then 20 steps back. So either way, I'm proud of you. Whether you take it slow, whether you take it fast, over time, you're gonna start to see the benefits of your efforts not right away because it's not possible, but you're gonna look back and say, oh my God, that bitch was right. And if you're not subscribed at this point, I'm kind of offended. I've been your therapist. You may as well subscribe. Okay, that's the payment. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It helps me more than you know. Okay, thanks. Share this video with your friends or whoever may need it. Comment down below if any advice I gave resonated with you or even advice you have for me because I'll take it. I love you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. You got this. So girl, I learned the hard way. <laughs> For some people, it helps to keep a gratitude journal. So just <laughs> don't worry, because the next step is focus on everything at once. From uk. The works is open from 7 o'clock to 2100 hours every day. Alexa, stop it. You're scaring me.